Today, we're diving into the hotly debated topic. Do you plan to drive an electric vehicle long distance or do you just jump in and go? Many people who have EVs long term don't plan at all and some still do some planning but if it's your first long road trip in an EV you might be having a little bit of range anxiety a little bit of driving anxiety whether you're going to make it to the charges or if the charges are going to be working or there so today's video I'm going to be driving into my top tips about how to drive an electric vehicle long distance now a lot can be said about my critical debate about Tesla and how they operate as a company a car company and how well the cars are built but one thing they have 100% got nailed right is their charging hubs and the way the charger works with the car. Tesla have just narrowed down long distance traveling. Their sat nav works with their superchargers. Their superchargers work with the sat nav. So in other words, if you put the destination in, in a Tesla, you don't need to do any planning. The car will do all the planning. It will tell you where you need to stop. It will even tell you what point you need to set off from the charger where you'll have enough charge. So you don't spend too long there and it optimizes the best performance speed between all the charging stops you may need to do if you're doing a very long distance. Now, the other thing it will do is it will preheat the battery before you get to the charger because it's, it's built into the sat-nav, and it will always optimize for Tesla-only chargers. Now, the advantage of Tesla-only chargers, there's always lots of them, and you can also, with a Tesla, as long as your credit card information is in your Tesla account, you just plug in and walk away. It's one thing Tesla have definitely narrowed down. Now, the one thing the Tesla sat-nav won't do is it won't plan your journey based on destination charging, which we'll get into in a bit, which is one of my other top tips. Now, even if you haven't got a Tesla, long-distance travel can be completely hassle-free. In fact, if you've got a modern EV, the chances are that the total range of your battery, when 100% charged, is enough to get to your destination and in some cases even get back on one charge now if you plan the way you're stopping as in your final destination properly that could be perfect so the biggest tip i can give you is always leave your home when you're leaving home or when you're leaving wherever you charge regular leave on a hundred percent charge so if you know you're going away the next day get the battery up to a hundred percent ready for that road trip and that could be all you need however if you are stopping somewhere that you get in one charge but you're going to need a charge to get back try and plan where you're where you're staying so a hotel or a car park nearby has what we know as a destination charger so a slow charger very similar to your house charger where you can plug it in forget about it leave it overnight and wake up with a full charge just like you would be at home most people if they're driving a long distance they're driving to be somewhere and they're going to be there for a number of hours even if you're driving for business chances are you're going to be there for two three four hour you know stints at least when you get to your final destination if you plan that around a charging destination so a charger at the place where you're going then that basically solves all your issues plan your trips around your rest breaks or even sightseeing so if you're going to stop for the toilet stop the toilet and charge if you are going for a state visit or you're going for a european road trip or even a large uk road trip then maybe plan your journey around monuments sightseeing villages that you want to see and while you stop plug your car in and if you are stopping for a rest break toilet or anything like that or a meal usually the stop at a service station is the exact time that the car might need to charge people spend longer at a service station their dwell time is usually between 25 and 30 minutes which is plenty of time to charge most evs in fact some of the new modern evs can charge in much less than 15 minutes from a, from a 10 to 80 percent charge and that's where you really want to be aiming getting your car down to the five to ten percent range because you get the most speed right initially and also it'll tail off near the end at about 80 to 90 percent every car is different you'll learn your car as you go on now in a minute we're gonna give our top tip on how to get the best price of motorway service stations and all charges out there especially here in the uk another thing to remember is always pack your essentials now you might be driving uh, a long distance and you probably know to make sure you've got your pump, make sure you've got some spare screen rods, the basic necessities of normal long distance travel. But in an EV, don't forget your charging cable. Even though the fast chargers have cables built in, the slower destination chargers may require you to use your own tethered cable so make sure you bring that with you because it might be the cable that gets you out of a jam now range anxiety is something that very new ev owners do always experience it's a genuine fear when you don't have an electric car it's a fear that tends to go away with experience of owning an electric car but if you are suffering with range anxiety top tip don't go below 20 percent keep 20 percent reserve in your battery for your charging location so if you're going to a charger pick 
you know, pick a charger when you're around about 20%. And then if that charger is out of order or is broken, which is not really a problem as much as it used to be, especially here in the UK, we've pretty much solved that issue now. But in the States, I know it can be a real issue for you guys. So maybe save 20%, then you've got enough battery charge to get to another destination, another charger, if that charger is faulty. It just takes away that range anxiety. Now, as an experienced DV owner, I have get rid of that rule i tend to arrive charges very low state of charge below five percent this means i get the extra benefit of faster speed when i'm pulling up at a charger but also get the maximum range out of an ev it will come with experience so don't worry save that 20 percent if it makes you feel better now top tip if you want to make sure that you get to the charger and it's not busy it's not full it's not got loads of people there's a few things you can do first of all my top tip is always pick the most expensive charger you can find because most people will avoid it because of the price of the charger which means they are usually very quiet there's usually never anyone there because they're so expensive it tends to work all the time for me and why would i throw away forever this money because in the grand scheme of averages I only charge away from home very irregular and so irregular that the average cost of my EV ownership is still well below what petrol or diesel would be. So that one or two charges a year at a rapid station at high prices pays off long term. So it's not a big term worry. Or pick a charging station with lots of frequently sort of competition. So lots of hubs. So loads of charge companies have all got charges next to each other. That's a good thing. Or a charge location that has lots of charges. 5, 10, 15, 20 banks of charges all in the same place. Now, another top tip, you can use apps like PlugShare, ZapMap, uh, a better route planner. There's a whole list of other apps you can use that will actually tell you the status of the location. So if the charge is offline, communicating, working, some of them will tell you when the last person successfully charged on it. But most importantly, it'll tell you if someone's using that charger. So you can also use that to plan the journey around stopping at a charger because you know if that charger is currently in use. Now, a couple of other tips to benefit you on long journeys you can use those those route planning map apps to make sure the charge is not busy and that means that you're not wasting time waiting for someone else to finish on that charge but another thing you can do is you can drive more eco efficient if you drive your car a little bit slower at highway speeds and motorway speeds you will eke out extra miles per kilowatt now that might be the difference of your total journey being 10 minutes slower but it might mean the difference of 20 minutes not on a charger so bear in mind slowing down your speed maybe to by five or ten miles an hour won't make a massive difference to your overall end destination uh, arrival time but it will make a difference to the time you're going to spend at a charger so in other words you will arrive at your destination at either the same time or even possibly slightly earlier depending on how far your local trip is now a personal experience of mine i actually uh, did manchester here where i am now to frankfurt germany it's a very very long journey and we did that by just basically setting off from here with plenty of charge and stopping just outside the Euro tunnel in the UK. And we had a hotel which had a charger on. We stopped at that hotel. We charged up to full. And then I was meeting a friend in Belgium. When we met the friend in Belgium, basically a sightseeing stop. We charged at his place of work and then we carried on to Frankfurt. If you plan your journeys like this, the hotel, by the way, at Frankfurt, of course, had a charger. And on the way back, we took a bit more of a motorway stop and you know stop and start sort of thing there's a document i did like a little documentary video on that trip so see it top right if you want to see it. it's a very old video um it, my videos weren't as polished off then so i apologize now but it basically it's possible to do long distances and we did that several years ago when the uk and europe infrastructure just wasn't as good as it is today now it's worth noting in the uk any charger that charges your car i think it's 7.2 kilowatts has to have a tap charge payment on it so it has to have uh, basically credit card contactless card payment machine reader on the machine so that is pretty much most of the charges that are going to be fitted now not all the charges currently have this fitted but it's in legislation which means that they do have to upgrade them and do it there is a set date i can't remember if i remember i'll put it down below in the comment section or the description to tell you the exact date that comes in but there is a, a there is a point where they have to have cut off point where all these will be fitted with contactless charges this wasn't the case in the uk previously you had to download the company's app and then start the charge on that which many people found a barrier to ev and using an ev but we've got rid of that with legislation but i'm going to tell you now why you shouldn't be tapping your debit card on these machines there's a couple of reasons yes it is easier but 
if you download that company's app you could be saving a couple of pence per kilowatt hour for charging on it so if you pre-download all these apps it just means you could charge a little bit cheaper when you turn up at these companies chargers but there's a hack to get around even downloading these apps if you're in the uk even if you're not an octopus electric customer you can sign up for octopus electroverse octopus electroverse is a charge card that they give you that you can tap on machines contactless card read machines and it bills to a central octopus account if you're not an octopus customer they will bill you for it at the end uh, in a bill and if you are an octopus customer it'll just go onto your normal account you know account charges the best thing of all is you can start it by the octopus electroverse app but the rfid card works on you know works a lot easier just to tap it and it acts exactly the same as a, a contact card reader but you get the discount now if you're not an octopus energy customer then you don't get the same level of discounts that if you are an octopus energy customer depending on what energy deal you are on with octopus you'll get certain levels of discount for using an electroverse if you want to see what octopus offer on that done loads of tariff breakdowns of octopus go to evnick.com forward slash energy there's all the energy deals there and if you sign up as an octopus energy customer you'll get 50 pound if you want to sign up for octopus electric uh, electroverse there's also a code down below i believe we split 20 quid between us or a tenner each i'll double check and put it in the comments below so I'd, uh, it's all correct so there you have it with a bit of planning ev driving can actually be easier than driving a nice car and actually more enjoyable in fact if you can charge at home the time you save not going to a petrol station every single week adds up in time you're saving you over your life and is actually a lot more enjoyable i would never go back to ice never and then if you ask the majority of ev drivers they'll all tell you the same now if you want to see that trip i did to frankfurt then see that video here but if you're wondering about octopus energy and signing up and how it compares to another energy company i did this video here comparing octopus energies deal over to ovo energies anytime deal and don't forget to click subscribe and that like button down below thank you